back at the house today getting ready to get started on pulling up this tar paper and working on the subfloor took way too long to get that hardwood up but it's finally out of the way now so i'm gonna get uh set up get my light in the corner there start uh picking up all these nails i have a magnetic pickup tool and of course i can't find it right now when i need it i uh, made this job a heck of a lot easier to do so it is what it is so i'll go around get all these nails up start ripping up this tar paper and then we can start getting the subfloor out of the way so we can get to the joist get to the rim joist and see how involved this damage actually is man that's a lot of nails got us a floor and nail casserole going here we finally get into the subfloor so now I guess I'm gonna start pulling this subfloor back along this wall a couple feet in just to see how far back the joist have damage in them from the rim joist and to see how far down the damage is that the rim joist has so what I have to do is since the subfloor of course goes under the bottom plates of this wall I'm going to cut it, uh, cut all these slats a few inches back from the subwall. So uh, there's still something uh, underneath, and we can uh, come back in with plywood or uh, whatever new subfloor I'm going to, new subflooring material I'm going to put in. I know under here we're going to have to actually put the new subfloor material under this wall so we're gonna have to jack this wall up to get it between the rim joist when we repair it and the bottom plate of this door this whole bottom plate of this door frame and probably the side's gonna have to come out eventually because there's some right there but uh we'll get there once we get there so right now we're gonna start on uh, getting this up so we can get a better look at what's going on
Well, this ain't good. Nothing like an old kick to the stomach. Think you had it all figured out until you get a real good look underneath. I've got way more damage to the structure of this house than I initially thought. As you can see, the bottoms of almost all these joists are rotted out about a quarter of the way up. That rim joist is horrible and crumbling. Let's see if I can get down in here to show you a little better. A lot of the bridging here between these joists is rotted away. Oh, as you can see, that and these joists closest to the door.
just rotted mush. Oh, great. Just crumbling away. You know, I first, ex uh, I first theorized my issue was uh, this main door seal right here is what the rot uh, problem was. And I'm sure that's part of the problem, but I think now what I'm seeing is the issue here was when the HVAC, the central heat and air, was installed in this house and they went in and put this fiberglass batting insulation between the floor joist. I think that's what did the damage to these joists because there's no vapor barrier on this ground. It's just regular old Carolina red clay soil and it holds a lot of water and is usually wet all the time. When that stuff starts evaporating, it has nowhere to go but up. So normally in an older house, it gets into the joists and everywhere else, but there's plenty of airflow and it's able to dry out. I think that after they put that fiberglass batting in there, all that moisture coming out of the ground got trapped in that fiberglass insulation. It couldn't dry. It held moisture against the joist and that's what rotted these joists out. Not 100% sure, but I got a strong working theory that that's what the issue here was. So it was the HVAC ducting. I'm going to have to gut all that crap while I'm under here. And I see an issue there. Let's see if I can get back up here without collapsing this whole daggum floor. Oh. Is that the rim joists were placed directly on these brick and mortar footers. There's no vapor barrier between that. I don't believe there's any vapor barrier between the rim joist and the brick wall. It looks like the tar paper inside on the outside of the wall stops at the bottom of the wall, which doesn't do much good to help the daggum rim joist not absorb water. But it is what it is. So at this point, I'm going to take a minute and sit back and try to think this through. But I believe my plan of attack at this point will be to rip up the subfloor back further to see how far back this uh, damage actually is, this rot in the lower portions of the floor joist. If it's only about half the room, great. If it goes back further, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But if it stops mid length of the room right about here, that shouldn't be too terrible. I can go through, jack up, and support each joist individually here at the midpoint, get that weight off of uh, the edge here, try to shore that up, then go back and try to, I'm not sure what order I'm going to have to do this in actually, because if I cut off the joist here, then there's not much support for that main wall. All that'll be sitting on is that rotten rim joist. I might have to replace the rim joist first, but I've got to hold up this load bearing wall some form or fashion. I guess what I'd have to do is build some kind of platform underneath these joists or from the floor up above these joists and then build a support wall to the ceiling here. Hopefully that'd be enough to alleviate the pressure off of this wall. It would allow me to cut out this bad rotted section of the rim joist and replace it. Once that is done, then I've got a solid foundation to tie all the joists back into and can cut them out one at a time and sister in new joist. Like I said, as you know that follow my Mr. Subaru channel, I'm an auto technician, not a carpenter, not a structural engineer, so I may have found that I, I'm in far too greatly over my head for this project, so we shall see.
I uh, may go ahead and end the video here. I'm not sure if I'm going to go ahead and cut, pull up the rest of this uh, subfloor back a little further. If I do, we will come back. Alrighty, I'm back. I pulled up more of the floor to see how far this rot is going in the joist. And the rot goes all the way back to the rim joist at the back of the living room. It, uh... It goes a tiny bit into the dining room, but not very far, and it doesn't go very far back past this rim joist. And it appears that uh, it stops basically right here in the living room. It does not appear to go into the hallway or the master bedroom. So, looks like I'm going to be pulling the entire living room out. And most likely replacing every joist in this floor. This is going to be a very fun job. Or I'm going to put a bulldozer through the house and uh, walk away from this project. <laughs> Not sure yet. Got a lot to think on. So, we'll just leave it at that. Okay, back one more time. Promise. As I was getting ready to pack up to leave for the day, I uh, thought about it. I did not want to leave this like it is since I took some of the structural uh, support out by pulling up the subfloor that kind of, you know, braced the joist crossways. So I've gone ahead and reinforced this uh, damage a bit. What I did was uh, put some cinder blocks down and board on top of them, a 20 ton bottle jack, started jacking up underneath these joists. I know it's not the best way to do it, but I have a cinder block and boards on top of it uh, right here where the worst of the sag was. I've taken a lot of the sag out of the floor just by jacking uh, these two joists up and supporting them. As you can see, our gap is now much smaller than it was. The nails are actually going back from the bottom plate into the rim joist when they were. Uh, about an inch, inch and a half below where the end of the nails uh, stopped. So, feeling a little more optimistic about this. Plan of attack right now is I'm going to, I'm already packed up for the day. I'm going to go to Home Depot. I'm going to get some six mil black plastic to use as a vapor, vapor barrier. I'm going to get all of this. Uh, I'm going to get the rest of the subfloor out tomorrow. Once I get the subfloor out, I'm going to get all this old insulation and junk out of here. I'm going to get the HVAC vent work out of this room. I am going to dig out and clean up and level off as good as I can the ground underneath. Then I'm going to put down that vapor barrier. That should help a lot with the moisture. You can tell just from, I don't know if you can see very well, I'm going to try to get you to some areas. But just from opening up this floor today, there's actually water dripping. You can see right here water droplets on the ground where it is uh, condensing on all of the paint, all of the drywall, all over the ceiling. You can see that sheen on the ceiling. It's all moist. All this, all this is very, very saturated soil down there. Like I said, it is red clay soil, but it's really wet right now. So if I get that vapor barrier down, you can see really well here on the tile around the fireplace, super moist, no good. And uh, that's what's been getting trapped into the insulation and held against the floor joist. So of course they rotted out. And as you can see all the water on the inside of the window, but um, yeah, so remove the rest of the subfloor brace up as much as I can and level it up like I've done over here clean all of this mess out under here put vapor barrier in block that water from getting up in here once I get that done and I have a clean slate basically to start working on then I'll try to figure out what I'm gonna do with the rim joist and the joist replacement what I'm probably gonna do is just replace the entire length of the joist because they end right here at the end of this wall there's a rim joist here as far as I can think, I don't think that the joist actually sits under, it does not, the joist does not sit under the 
wall. So all of the structural support for these load bearing walls, this one and this one, should just be in that rim joist. So I should be able to pull up one joist at a time, shouldn't give me much uh, problem. But the main thing is gonna be trying to figure out how I'm gonna get that rim joist there replaced because it is horrible. This one in the back has quite a bit of rot and hit too, but it's still solid and straight across. Plus it's got the fireplace on it. So I don't know. I'll know more once I get the rest of the subfloor up. So one last little update before I shut it down for the day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.